Uh, my name is Jordan Hibben, and our group is researching and putting into practice the wireless tran power transmission. Um, after looking into our old concept a little bit, we've come to realize that it's not practical, and after talking to Professor Averly, it's just within the scope of the class, it's not possible. So we've pivot pivoted a bit, and uh, as instructed by uh, Professor Averly, um, we're going to go with like a 77 gigahertz range frequency on a reflector antenna. Uh, to talk to you more about that, I'm going to pass it on to my friend Armand and he can give you more information about the reflector antennas. My name is Armand Villani and uh, I'm going to be talking about kind of where we were and what we're going to do um, and some of the problems that we encountered with the plan that we had. Um, so everything kind of stems from the freeze transmission equation. Um, all the problems we were having, Dr. Averly showed us this the other day when we went in and talked to him. Um, so what we were looking at before was doing kind of an array, um, and we're going to get a beam pattern off that. Uh, and our idea was to tightly control this beam uh, and turn it into something called a pencil beam and aim it directly at the device that we were planning to charge. Um, however, that turned out to be a little more difficult than we thought. Um, when we started talking to Dr. Averly, he was looking at the more uh, 60 to 77 gigahertz range for our frequency, and um, the optimal spacing for one of these right are half wavelength. So at that kind of a frequency, this wavelength, this spacing is going to be tiny, and factoring that into the equation where this is the power received at the device, this is your power transmitted, you've got the gain respectively of both your transmitting and receive antennas, um, and then you have this factor here. As you can see, that lambda really factors into there. Um, and with a tiny lambda being squared and at some kind of a range, this factor would really end up diminishing any power that we got to the device. Also, at this kind of two meter range, this beam's gonna be a lot wider than whatever charging receiver we would have, so we'd end up missing a lot of our power. What we're looking to do now, instead of all of that, is move to something that's um, closer to like a cassid rain type antenna, where we have some kind of feed, um, and it bounces off this panel, redirects it here, and goes out so that we get more of a plane wave. And like uh, Dr. Abel was telling us, that plane wave will not diminish um, so significantly over some range. So what we're looking to do is get anywhere between 50 and 80 percent of our power successfully transmitted um, at a range. And uh, yeah, we believe that we're going to make this panel flat just to ease manufacturing. But to talk more about that, I'm going to hand it off to Alex Devonport, who's going to talk about hardware and manufacturing. Hey everyone, I'm Alex Devonport, the electronics and software lead for our project. And so, our new direction that we're taking with our idea is going to involve um, a lot of changes for like, the electronics and hardware of the system, mostly um, positive ones, I would say. So just to give you a recap, here's what we were thinking we were doing originally, basically having RFID tracking to know where both the uh, transmitter and receiver are at all times in case they're moving, and having some sort of RF power transmitter system, having some sort of phase system to control you know, the phase of each element in our um, antenna array, and then finally some sort of um, array of simple antennas, like little patch antennas that would basically just be, you know, like uh, squares on a circuit board. Now, with our new idea, we don't need quite so much of all this. Like, we can get rid of the active RFID tagging, because we're going to assume we know where it is. And we can get rid of the phase control unit, because we're no longer using a phased array, but in fact a single casting array antenna. And that really is going to make everything a lot easier for us, because there's no easy way of doing phase control at high frequencies, or even really at low frequencies. Now, <clears throat> since we have simpler electronics, there are some trade-offs for that. Um, the hardware, for one thing, gets a lot more difficult. Because here you can see in the new idea, not quite as many blocks, we mostly just had to worry about generating an RF signal and sending it to a, uh, an antenna so it can be received by whatever receiver we design. Now, this is a bit decept deceptive, though, at this uh, block diagram level, because this feed and this antenna <clears throat> become, well, very difficult questions to answer how we're going to do it. Especially, uh, Actually, this manufacturing the antenna is going to be our new most difficult problem. Because uh, a cast grade antenna requires a very, well, I guess it's just very high quality parabola, is all there is to it. Like we have to uh, master the art of generating a very smooth curved parabola in space, which is not an easy task. Alright, my name's James, and like Alex said, we're going to run into a few problems. So it's best to tackle our tasks from the bottom up. First, we need to investigate some alternative transmission media, as Mr. Kaziki suggested. We might look into sound and maybe its effectiveness in the field. After that, we can solidify some dimensions on our antennas and find a suitable dish size appropriate for the wavelength, we, uh, wavelength and frequencies we intend to use. 
After that, we can research some reflector antenna manufacturing techniques and see how smooth we can get our dish because with increased frequency, we're more susceptible to surface noise. So, after that, we can hopefully get started on this thing.